This is Josiah Plays Kingdom Death Monster, the People of the Skull Campaign, on Tabletop Simulator. Welcome back. It's time for our next Lantern Year for the settlement of Marrowhaven. Blood Skull, the Mother of Words, stands ready. Bone Grinder, the Murder Lord. Our murderous leader stands ready. Bone Tree, the returned, stands ready. And Laughing Skull, as always, stands ready. We're going to go forth, and we're going to once again hunt a Beast of Sorrow. These things aren't, like, unique, right? Like, I'm not sure if we're allowed to hunt them more than once. It didn't specifically say anywhere that we're not, so... I'm going to. Let's get this set up here. I think we're all set with our survival. Unfortunately, Bone Tree only has 7 out of 10, but he can't get any more because he is too squeamish. Too squeamish to carry a uh, shit salve with him. Is that music a little too loud? Too squeamish. Got the squeams. All right, we're gonna set up the hunt phase. Shuffle, shuffle. Throw one of these down. 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 Throw one of these. What did I do? I fucked up. Man, I remember the good old days. Here's the lion way the fuck back here at the end of all this shit. I remember the good old days when you'd hunt this fucking lion and it'd be right here. You're like, la la la. It's no la 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 time anymore. The end of la la la. Alright, I think we're gonna put mineral gathering right in the beginning, but we're gonna throw herb gathering, like, back here. You know what? Fuck it. We'll put mineral gathering back here too. Hashtag the end of la la la. Yeah, I was actually thinking of that as a hashtag as I said it. Okay, here we go. We're ready for the hunt? We're ready for the hunt. First goes forth bone grinder. Into the sea of golden grass. Fields of golden grass lay ahead. The event revealer may choose to avoid the planes and roll twice on the hunt event table. Otherwise, each survivor gains plus one courage and the event revealer rolls on the table. Alright, cool. I like everybody gaining plus one courage. I mean, two of my people are already maxed on courage, but two of my people are not. Bone Tree gains courage. Laughing Skull is only one courage away from possibly getting sweet battle. So that'd be cool. Event Revealer rolls on the table. That's you, Bone Grinder. How about an eight? 
You pick up the trail. Choose to move the white lion one space forward or backward on the hunt event board. Well, we're definitely going to move him forward. Moving forward, Blood Skull will reveal the next. Lion in heat. The darkness is filled with unearthly screeching and yowling. Huddled together, the survivors close their eyes but cannot sleep. Everybody takes one brain event damage. Well, I'm not super concerned about that, given the frankly ludicrous amounts of insanity that we have. Except for... Bone Tree, who's only a lot insane, not a super lot insane. Alright, up next will be... Who is the one that has the unearthly luck? Yeah, let's throw Laughing Skull into the next one. Well, we get a random event. Now, she gets to... 35. On event table. It says very clearly here that she can add one on a table. And you may. So she gets the choice. So actually, by having her. Yeah, choose to move the lion forward or otherwise move backwards and insta fail the hunt. And that means when we roll this, 35, she can choose to add one to it. So I think I can do Hunt Event 35 or 36. That's what I think. I don't understand number 36. The survivors rush forward, feeling their quarry close at hand. Skip the next hunt space. If this move begins the showdown, the survivors ambush their quarry. Okay, that part I understand. If any survivor has noisy gear, the survivors do not ambush. Okay, I understand. Then it says... Start the showdown normally. Does that mean we still start the showdown right now? But just without an ambush? Or does it mean we don't start the showdown because the next skipping the next space does not bring us to the quarry? I think it means the latter. I think we're going to take 36 on the trail and we're going to skip the next space. Now it's Bone Tree's turn. Yeah, that makes sense to me, Nox. The scratching grounds. Claw marks scar the ground. The survivors may choose to investigate. Each survivor that investigates gains plus one courage and rolls in the table. Well, I can tell you right now, we're all investigating. <sighs> so first, Blood Skull is going to investigate. She got a 10 right out the gate. She gives no fucks. We got a prize in the rubble underfoot. Gain a lion claw. White Lion Resource. That means uh, it's Bone Grinder's turn to investigate. He only gets a three, though. Sifting through the rubble, a shifting stone crushes the survivor's hands. The survivor suffers one event damage to the arm's location. Of course, when he takes damage, he just comes off his immortal. So he goes down to a 50. 
Um, next, Bone Tree investigates, gaining a courage. Gaining an eight. Nothing happens. I'll spend one survival. To make it a nine and gain another lion claw. And then a cool thing happens because Laughing Skull gains a courage and triggers the See the Truth event. Oh, she's about to be blind. But let's see what she gets on the table first. She got a three, but she can add a one to that, making it a four. A four, which does nothing. So that's fine. So we gain two Lion Claws out of that, and Laughing Skull levels up her courage to the maximum level and can now see the truth. So when you see the truth... It's kind of ironically named because that's when you end up getting blinded. Blinded by the light. That's what seeing the truth looks like. It reminds me of my childhood. The greatest courage is achieved when the past and future are abandoned. The void that remains is a dark, endless well of strength. Fear and pain are your nourishment, and you will feast. You suddenly recall meeting a strange, masked man, who for a moment opened your second eyelids. What you saw filled your mouth with the taste of your own death. It still tasted better than Cola O. All right, suffer blinded. We know how this goes. Blind, copy, book, paste. And she's lost an eye, hashtag cola, oh no, yeah. Blind, impairments, blind, edit. Minus one permanent accuracy. Ooh, that's not good. She didn't have a lot of accuracy to spare. Lonely fruit must contain cola o. Lonely fruit is literally the fruit that cola o comes from. Cola o is just lonely fruit juice. Roll a d10. Hey, she can get. She can add one to this if she wants because she has otherworldly luck. A ten. The thing is, I don't think I want a 10. No, that's the opposite of what I want. I want a 1 or a 2. Oh, sour is shitty. Although Bitter Frenzy is pretty good. can encourage yourself if you're knocked down and gain a strength token? That's crap. That's craptastic. Hold on. What did she roll? A fucking 10. You know what? I'm doing it. I'm spending or losing eight of her survival, bringing her all the way down to two, which is probably a bad idea. Could come back to bite me in the ass. I'm going all the way down to two survival because we're going to make that sweet. When your second eyelids opened, the veil of darkness was lifted. You recall looking to the sky and viewing a horizon of titanic faces. Each face is different and peers at a different part of your body. 
death was upon you, and a strangely sweet flavor swirled around in your mouth. You volatilized the esters of death. Gain the weak spot disorder. Oh, that could be a problem, though. Did we get rid of weak spot on the other person that had it? I think we did. That could be a problem. Considering that we can't wear most armor. Weak spot. I gotta see what location it is. Behead. Behead. Head. Head is not legs. It was always legs. The other two that got weak spot, it was fucking legs for them too. So the bad news about that is... The bad news about that is... She cannot depart unless she has leg armor on, and there's no leg armor for us that we can wear because we're people of the skull. Now, she's already on a hunt now, so that's not going to affect her immediately, but once we go back to settlement, if we don't get rid of this disorder, she's not going to be able to go back out. However, the good news is... She also gains sweet fucking battle. Which is a beautiful ability. You get to surge without spending survival. Alright, so blind can come over here. We understand that she's blind. And she's got sweet battle. Now everyone has sweet battle except for Bone Tree, who is the least courageous of us. Actually, he's only one away now. And then we need to get five points of understanding for her, and all of our characters will be fully maxed on survival and courage, which is pretty great. All right. Good job, Laughing Skull. Good job. Now we seek overwhelming darkness. And overwhelming darkness is never really good. We all have to walk the path of the insane. Because we're all insane. Starting with Blood Skull. A nine. Lose all insanity. No. No, she is not finding a strange piece. Un-the-fuck acceptable. Um... So instead... We're gonna re What if she suffers frenzy? If she suffers frenzy... She'll be berserk in the fight, and she won't be able to use... Fighting arts, or specializations, or spend survival. Which, I don't know if that's really the end of the world. Although I don't like it. Finding a strange peace equals unacceptable. Yeah, no, there's no fucking peace in this world. She's gonna lose two survival to get startling visions and gain a random disorder. Oh, that's what we want for her, actually, because she might get immortal. Which is what we've been trying to- we've been trying to get her some disorders. Ghostly- she's already got ghostly beauty. I don't think you can get the same one twice, unless it says you can. And I think, um... If you- do you get a disorder? That you've already got, it just nothing happens. Survivors can have up to three disorders. Additional disorders gain must replace a disorder of your choice. If a survivor would gain a disorder they already have, nothing happens. Okay, so she ends up she ends up getting nothing. So that's cool. Although it's still not uh, in, over, um, it's still not, um, God, I can't talk, I can't think. 
It's still not. Can she give this to someone else? That'd be cool. Here. I got this ghostly beauty disorder. I don't want it. Would you like it, Bone Grinder? Because that'd be pretty cool. A disorder handoff. Oh, I think it's already been copied back into the deck. Ghostly beauty. Disorder swap. That'd be cool. Alright, so that's not so bad. Random disorder, not tripping. Um, then there's Bone Grinder's turn on the overwhelming darkness. He got a 10. Now he suffers frenzy. I don't mind him suffering frenzy so much. Because... He suffers frenzy. He can't use survival anyway. He won't be able to use crazed or fencing or unconscious fighter. Or weapon specialization. I mean the only other option. to take him all the way down to random disorder also we'll give him a random disorder too fuck it he got a 10 we're gonna take him down to a seven by losing three survival. Porter, oh, this doesn't sound good. You compulsively collect and stash anything you can get your hands on. Every little bit you add to your secret hoard makes your existence feel more real. Okay, this is what Saito has, I think. Whenever you are a returning survivor, archive one resource gained from the last showdown and gain plus one courage. Well, that would actually be rad if you had a character that didn't have much courage. You'd be getting free courage every single showdown, but... He's already got max courage, and that basically just means we lose a fucking resource every time, so... We're gonna try to make get rid of that as quickly as possible. Gotta get rid of that as quickly as possible. Um, we're gonna be playing a lot of drums when we get back. Removing some disorders. Alright, going onward. Bone Tree. Let's see what the darkness does to him. Ten. Man, it really wants to give us some fucking frenzy, doesn't it? You know, he could use the extra insanity. Alright, I'm just gonna let him frenzy. So when you frenzy, you get a D5 insanity. That's three. And you become Berserk, gaining a plus one speed token, which is not what he needed. And a plus one strength token, which he also really didn't need. Um, and you can ignore the slow property on weapons. But, you can't spend survival, or use fighting arts, or use weapon specializations. Which in his case, isn't really going to be that big of a deal, so... It's fine. Moving on. Laughing Skull can add one to this roll if she chooses to. She got an 8. Lose all insanity. That's unacceptable. 
she could go frenzy. Or gain another disorder. I got an eight, I can make it a nine with her luck. So I either spend one survival to make her hysterical and suffering frenzy or spend one survival to gain a random disorder. Fuck it, we're going disorder. Flower, ah, oh, no. All right, we're gonna be playing a lot of fucking drums. Not flower addiction. Can only depart to hunt the flower knight. We gotta get rid of two on her now. And and squeamish. And hoarder. All drums all the time from now on. So much drums. Like you cannot handle the amount of drums that are about to be played. The amount of drums. Okay. Well, that's overwhelming darkness. Good times, good times. Moving forward, it's mineral gathering time. Yay! Bust out your pickaxes, boys and girls. It's time to gather some minerals. If there's more random disorder attempts, they could overwrite one since it's maxed at three. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Which is pretty great. Every survivor with a pickaxe rolls on the mineral gathering table. How many survivors have pickaxes? One. Two. Somebody doesn't want to be part of pickaxe club. Three. Everybody except for Bone Grinder. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm too busy murdering party members to do mining. Alright. Roll on it, Blood Skull. We got a four. A big four. An exciting four. Gain a Broken Lantern basic resource. A sudden rock slide catches everyone off guard. All survivors take two event damage to a random hit location. Right, that's the suck. I don't know if it's worth her losing two more survival. Did anybody get frenzied? Except for Laughing Skull. She got frenzied, right? Or maybe she didn't. Maybe I took a disorder instead. Nobody got frenzied then. No, because I rolled a d5 insanity for somebody. And I gave her the token. Oh, Bone Tree. Bone Tree got frenzied. Okay. Okay. Um... I don't think I'm going to lose more two survival for this. I think we'll just take it. I'll take the broken lantern. And everybody will take two event damage to a random hit location. Two to the body. Not great.
two to the insanity because he's immortal. Two to the body. We're gonna get killed because of this stupid mining thing. Two to the legs. Hey! No wonder she wants to have armor on her legs. <laughs> She's like, I must have armor on my legs! And everybody's like, no, it's okay, you'll be fine. The very next thing that happens, her legs get hurt. <laughs> okay, good times. Alright, next mineral gatherer will be Bone Tree. Let's see what you got. A five. The same thing. That's not great. No. He's gonna lose his survival. We'll get an iron strange resources among the unyielding stone faces. As you free it, you hear a snap. If your pickaxe is frail, archive it. But oh wait, we're people of the skull, we ignore frail on our items. So that nothing that nothing happens. He just gets an iron. Strange resources. Yeah, there's nothing more strange than iron, right? I mean that's some weird ass shit. Harder than bone, no shit. Okay. And finally, Laughing Skull. Who can add one to this? Nine. Here we go. Here we go. It's Worm Tunnel's time. Gain a scrap. Basic resource. If this event occurs after Overwhelming Darkness, it did, you find a cave. Once per mineral gathering, all survivors must descend to the worm tunnels. We must descend to the worm tunnels. I don't understand, does everybody have to roll individually on this? I think everyone has to roll individually on this. Okay, here we go again. Blood Skull. It's a seven. You blunder in the darkness, lost and separated from the other survivals. Survivals? Survivors. A voice whispers to you, leading you back. Lose two in survival and gain two in sanity. If you are deaf, you do not heed the voice and disappear into the dark. You are dead. <laughs> do not be deaf and go mining, apparently. Well... There's some cool shit in the Crystal Lake. What did she get? A 7? You know, I could make that an 8. What is up, Boss Pie? Good to see you. Top cheer with one bit. Good job. Good job. You're the bit boss. The single bit boss in this case. What the hell is that thing next to your name? Bits Leader. You've got a Bits Leader badge for one bit. Nice. Are we going to give up all of our survivors before we even get to the...
There's a thing in the Lantern City that just kills you if you're insane. That's not good. But the Crystal Lake is pretty nice. Alright, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go Crystal Lake. She's gonna use the survival to make her 7 into an 8. At which point she finds a strange, an iron strange resource next to a passageway that leads deeper into the cave. Choose to either gain the iron or spend 2 survival and descend to the Crystal Lake. Let's go. Fuck it. Let's spend all of our survival before we even get to the fucking fight. Um, Alright, she goes down to the Crystal Lake. Let's see what happens. An 8. Choose to either gain 2 Iron Strange resources, or gain 3 Insanity and spend 4 Survival to descend to the Lantern City. Now that's a terrible, terrible idea. That's not going to happen, because at that point, she would only have one survival left. And in the Lantern City, there's a 4 out of 10 chance for her to just die. So, no, we're not going to the fucking Lantern City. We're going to take the 2 iron and call it a day. Oh, she does have double all survival costs. So actually, when she spent two to go to the Crystal Lake, she actually spent four to go to the Crystal Lake. Oh, that's not great. Now she's down to three. I didn't think of that. Not really worth it for two iron, but Especially since we can't even make most of the stuff that you can make with iron. But it's alright. Lesson learned. We went to the Crystal Lake. Times were fun. We could have gotten Crystal Skin out of that, which would have been pretty cool for these characters since they can't wear most of the armor anyway. Alright. Next character. Descending to the worm tunnels. It's Bone Grinder. What happens? It's a 10 right out the gate. You can go to the Crystal Lake. I like going to the Crystal Lake. You know what? He's going to the Crystal Lake. He doesn't want that iron. He's going deep. Roll again. A three. A reflection speaks to you. Lose three survival and gain plus three insanity. That doesn't seem worth it. What does seem worth it is losing one survival, turning that into a two, and getting this. Drifting phosphorescent spores infect your pores. Record all armor gear in your gear grid in the settlement storage and archive it. Gain two armor to all hit locations and the following ability, crystal skin. You cannot place armor in your gear grid. When you depart, gain two armor to all hit locations. Suffer minus one to the result of all severe injury rules. So his skin just turned to crystal. What that means is Ooh, the death mask isn't even armor. So he doesn't even lose the death mask. So I don't think he's wearing anything. Oh, the lion skin cloak is armor, so he's going to lose that. It says it goes back to settlement storage, though, so we'll still have it. gets um
It gets crystal scared. Well, you know, he could still use that armor when he runs out of insanity. I don't know that it's really all that good, honestly. But. We'll take it. This makes him even more immortal. Immortaler. And now he has a spot in his gear grid where he can put something new. All right, the bone tree going to the tunnels. A nine. Does bone tree want to descend to the crystal lake? I don't think so. I think bone tree is just going to take the iron and call it a day. You can put some fecal sap back. Yeah. Rub some fucking shit on his crystal skin. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, finally, it's Laughing Skull. A five. Okay, five isn't good. Well, she can add one to it with unearthly luck, otherworldly luck, making it six. That doesn't help. She only has one survival, so actually... <clears throat> She can't modify this enough to change the result. If she lowers it to a 4, it doesn't help. If she raises it to a 6 and then raises it to a 7, that also doesn't help. So, she's stuck with this. Blundering in the darkness, lost and separated from the other survivors, a voice whispers to her, leading her back. She loses two survival, she only has one, so she's down to zero now and gains two insanity. I don't like the fact that I'm going into a fight with zero survival on a character. That's not the best. Too bad we don't have a first aid kit. Zero survival on my weakest character, too. Of course, she does have the life elixir, so... Alright, we're done with the fucking mineral gathering craziness. Very crazy. At which point we come back over here and we have to do this thing, which is another random event. Thirteen. Who's the event revealer here? All four of them had to do it. Then Bone Grinder again. Oh, we skipped one, though. So we're back on Bone Grinder. Thirteen. Overload. Hasn't this happened to Bone Grinder before? This exact same thing? 
It did. This happened to a bone grinder before. He falls to his knees, sobbing uncontrollably. He simply had too much. Scrambling to understand, bone grinder must select to despair or never give up. Well, he's gonna never give up. Never giving up. He's immortal. Got a three. Gain minus one accuracy token. Okay. His accuracy is ridiculous, so. The fuck are accuracy tokens? It's fine. And that's all for that event, so we can move forward to herb gathering. Hey! The survivors consume herbs and berries. All survivors gain plus one survival. We're grazing. <coughs> We're grazing. We need it too, because we just spent a shitload of survival on all these events. Herb gathering. Oh yeah, this is the thing where we all have to decide how many d10s we're gonna roll. And add 10 because we've passed overwhelming darkness. Dare I even explore the swamp with the, the levels of survival that we have? Any survivor with a sickle. That would be bone tree. And bone tree. So bone tree could explore the swamp if we got a 75. But... If he explores the swamp, he's a sick survival. So I guess I don't have to worry about him dying. I guess... We'll go for it. Well, we need to decide... She's gonna roll... 4d10. All right, we're up to 16 so far. All right, that's 29. We're up to 45. Fifty a sixty-two seventy-seven eighty-seven. We did it. The survivors find a path through the weeds. Any survivor with a sickle may explore the swamp. All right, Bone Tree, go do your weird plant shit that you like to do. A 10. Oh, he gets to eat the fruit. Deep in the swamp, you find a twisting vine in the shape of a withered hand holding a fruit. Seductive and repulsive, the shining fruit is a sight to behold. You must eat the fruit. If you cannot consume, then nothing happens. So oh, that's what would have happened if Bone Grinder did it, because he can't consume. Eat the fruit. If you consume a second shining fruit, they die instantly. Oh. I wonder if that means, like, a second one on this trip? No, because you only get to do it once on this. 
So that's why you can't come here and just get as many fucking affinities as you want. Because if you do this a second time, you're done. Gotta switch sickle characters. Yeah, for sure, Nox. All right, let's eat the fruit. This can also kill you instantly. It's a cyclic pattern. Really, Nox? A 10. Bitter blue seeds stain your mouth with thick black juice. Their powerful flavor awakens you. You are forever changed. Gain one permanent blue affinity. Hey, that could be really helpful for what we were trying to do earlier with activating the blue charm thing. I don't know how to notate that on my character here, though. Like, there's not, like, just an ability that says, hey, have a blue affinity. Put another blue charm off to the side. Yeah, I could do that. Or I could, um, what I could do is just made a red square, but where is it? Now, if I take this red square and I color tint this red square to be blue, and I ensmalinite this a little bit, Put it somewhere where I'll remember it. Also, I think I want to make it a little bit brighter blue. Not that bright, though. Why is it getting all purpley when I go that direction? I made it too small. I'm just going to put it right here for now. Why does he have a random blue square there? Because he has a blue affinity. That's why. Now we need to get him <clears throat> one of these. Because then he could be the blue fucking charm master, for real. So that's what's cool about Tabletop Simulator, man. You can just make any kind of objects and throw them on there anytime you want. And make them, and make them whatever color you want, whatever size you want.
If I just want to make the blue cube jump in the ground, in the air, I can. Want to zoom in on the blue cube? Hey, that's what the blue cube looks like okay all right we're done here we did herb exploration he gained a blue affinity forever and we're done here only one person had a sickle but now we have to do this event event revealer is Blood Skull. Crawling Lion. Alright, it moves one space away from us. And it starts with ground fighting again. It's a TARDIS, big blue box. Yeah. Laughing Skull? No, we'll do um, Bone Tree for this one. Mark Territory, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get Innovation, but we are, we get Ammonia, but we already have it. Roll a random hunt event. How does a 31 sound? 31. Strange path. The survivors stop at the head of a path. Small lanterns twinkle, marking its edges. The event revealer decides if the survivors follow the path. If the event revealer is insane, everybody's insane. They must follow the path. If the survivors follow the path, roll on the table below, adding the event revealer's understanding to the result. The event revealer I said was Bone Tree. His understanding is 9, so... This is going to be a very high roll. 18 is my roll. How does that work for you, pal? Oh, cool! path leads to the beast you're hunting. The survivors ambush the monster and start the showdown immediately. Great. Ambush means we get to go first. And, and ambush means we get to set up the board however the fuck we want. We can put the monster anywhere on the board. We can put ourselves anywhere on the board. And we can put the terrain anywhere on the board. That's what happens when you ambush. It's pretty cool. So I could start the monster all the way in the corner or something if I wanted to do something weird. Um, but we need to figure out which terrain is actually going to be here. Because now it's time to set up the showdown itself. So we still have two tall grass terrain. And we have two random terrains. Fucking stone columns, seriously? And a toppled pillar useless. Get out of here with your toppled pillar. It's even, it's even toppled, so you can't ram it, really. Alright, well, we have three stone columns. We don't need the other three, because this time there's not six. There's just three. Pre-rammed pillar. Ambush and ground fighting, yeah, so we can basically be set up and do whatever we want in the beginning of this shit. Although we still have to follow the rules on the card, so... I don't even care about this toppled pillar. Um... Tall grass. Okay, so how do we want to set this up? I'm 
Honestly, even though we could set up the lion wherever we want, I'm still pretty much perfectly happy to put the lion in the fucking center. I mean, it doesn't... I don't... I wouldn't get much in the way of tactical advantage from putting the lion anywhere else. Honestly. Alright, what we're gonna do... So the lion has weak spot. He has cunning. He has a speed and a damage token. His toughness of 13. He gets 10, 5, and 1 for his AI deck. So he gets these 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1. And he's got Trample. And he's got Cunning. They're actually going to start like this. We'll stay out of his... out of his area. Until we're ready to do our thing. And... Yeah, I guess we're ready to start this off. We get to go first. It doesn't really matter, though, because he's ground fighting. We basically have infinite free turns to do anything we want. So let's fuck around with all of the extra shit we want to do before we, before we fight the actual creature. What that means is... Use the Flower Knight badge. Draw a tactics card. We got Spiral Formation. Once per showdown, if the survivors are standing in this formation, you may spend one survival to make an attack that ignores all monster reactions. That's pretty fucking cool. Unfortunately, trap card does not count as a reaction, so it wouldn't ignore the trap card, but we could conceivably use that. Um, and she gains a plus one evasion token. Which is good. Then, what else do we want to use? Anything special? He's got a big fucking blue cube here. He's berserk, so he can't just do anything the fuck he wants. He can use the cat's eye circlet, though. So let's spend a, an action using that. Revealing the next three monster hit locations. And put them back in any order. So here's the first three hit locations. Um, I don't know what order to put them back in. I don't think I care that much. And... I don't know why he's the one that has the healing potion when he's the least likely to suffer any permanent injuries because he's ultra insane. Oh, we'll sort that out. Blood Skull's going to do... Red Fist. It doesn't even take an action, it's just a thing that happens. Because we needed some extra strength really badly. What did I say this thing's toughness was? 13, lol. 
You think adjacent survivors can swap gear in their gear grids? Well, there's no one he could... Wait, really? She's gonna do Order of Death. Everybody gains two insanity. She actually gains four. about it now though what I am worried about is really nothing I'm not even worried at all we saw last time how easy this thing is all right so after all we do we do all that we start a new turn and I guess we're going to start with some dart chucking. Laughing Skull should probably do it because she has the smallest amount of speed. So Laughing Skull will hurl six darts at the monster. Her accuracy is not very good though. She needs a four or better to hit. She got five hits. Not bad. All right. Oh, she can knock him down with this one. What's her luck looking like? Eight. So two or higher, she crits. Let's attack the straining neck first. Seven, she crits. Take off the wound card. Roll a d10. A seven. Paralyzed, the monster is knocked down. Sweet, no more reactions out of you. She's gonna hit the beast knee. Another crit. It twists unnaturally and shatters. The white lion gains minus one movement token. I don't even know if I'm bothering to put tokens on this thing. It's going to die so fucking quickly. Uh, in the tail. Oh, not a crit. But is it a wound? 3 plus 11 is... Yeah, it's a wound. A wound, but not a crit. Beast ear. Also a crit. The force of the blow damages the white lion's ear. It is now partially deaf. Gains a minus one accuracy token. Cool. And against the soft belly. Also a crit. In a random white lion resource, the white lion's intestines hang from the wound on its gut, dragging on the floor. It's the Oregon Trail! 
the start of every monster turn before it draws an AI card, roll a d10. On a result of one, the monster suffers an extra wound. That's nice. Ground fighting definitely gets discarded now because it's been wounded. Just hit it five times. It's lost five AI cards. She gets a random white lion resource. A great cat bones. Very nice, because that's exactly what we need. Those great cat bones are like the reason we're here, basically. Oh, try to remind me, um, or hopefully I'll just remember. I want Bone Tree to get the killing blow, I think, on this one. Because he's the one that I think I want to get a random fighting art. I mean, not a random fighting art, but a fighting art of his choice. Too bad the King's Man couldn't get an organ trail. It would deal the killing blow to itself. That would be awesome. Yeah, because he could lose Tumble. Because honestly, fuck Tumble. I really want him to have Timeless Eye. The only fucking problem is... Here's the problem. Timeless Eye would be so good for him. Because you get a perfect hit on a 9 or 10. But you can't use Timeless Eye if you're blind. And he's gonna be blind as soon as he gets one more thing of courage. So then he couldn't use Timeless Eye unless he gets his blindness cured somehow. And that's pretty much a random thing that you can't really count on happening. It would probably never happen. So at that point I'd need to choose something else besides Timeless Eye. And I really don't know what I would choose. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think my little playlist is over. Let's try this one, I guess. I can't take fencing because it's a secret fighting art. You can't get a secret fighting art unless something specifically directs you to get it. That's why they have a whole separate deck from regular fighting arts. So she threw darts, she wounded the thing, she knocked it down. I don't think she's... Actually, she will surge. Now she can run in and fist and tooth him. So she'll move up to here and start fist and toothing. She needs threes to hit. She's going to be making seven. Ah, oh, but what about the trap card? Well, we'll hope for the best. She's going to be making seven fist and tooth attacks. Alright, that's cool. She doesn't have sweet battle, so this requires her last point of survival to surge. And she hit with all the attacks. All seven of them. She did get a perfect hit, which triggers Mighty Strike for her. Plus few strength. She, she didn't need it, so that doesn't really matter, but...
Alright. Let's try seven more hit location cards and hope that none of them are clever ploy. Alright, good. None of them are clever ploy. It doesn't get any reactions, so none of these reactions will take effect because it's knocked down. Um, so, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice right now. And we'll just take them in order, left to right, with the cards as they appear. They're all crits. That's seven more AI cards that are It's almost dead already. It's seven AI cards that just came off. And now let's look at all. I'm not even going to put any fucking tokens on this thing. It's going to be dead before it even matters that it has tokens. Ruin the monster straining tendon. It's re knocked down when it starts its movement. Roll a thing. Okay, there's a. Uh, bruised the lion's femur, crippling its graceful movement. Gain a random white lion resource. We got another eye of cat. As Laughing Skull begins to accumulate lots of things. Is that on the edge of something? Doesn't it look like it's... Why is it... Oh, because it's on the edge of this little blackboard thing here. Okay. Um, minus one, yeah, I don't care, its vision is impaired. You hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. No! She literally doesn't have one survival to spend. It's okay, she doesn't need any more strength, really. Persistent injury, lost hand, okay. White lion is knocked down again. It's now triple knocked down. Destroyed the lion's jaw. Roll a d10. An eight. On a five plus, the white lion's jaw flies off its face. The attacker gains plus one courage and plus one survival. Oh, if I'd have gained that plus one survival before I just did the other one, it would have, but that's okay. Max on courage. No big deal. And we've got the glorious mane. We have, we have ripped off the shimmering mane. If the attack is insane, the sheer frustration grants the power. Gain plus one strength token. We really don't need it, but whatever. I'll throw it on there just because it's cool. She rips off the shimmering mane as well. Where are you at, Shimmering Mane? I don't see the Shimmering Mane. Did I fuck up this deck somehow and not... and take the Shimmering Mane out and, like, not copy it and, like, delete it or something? I don't have the Shimmering Mane sitting over here, do I? Oh, no. I feel like I might have fucked this up. Because the Shimmering Mane's definitely not in here. And it's supposed to be in here. Oh, did I accidentally destroy the Shimmering Mane? Hard. I have the slightest fucking idea how to get it back. No, it's not White Fur, it's its own thing.
What if I like right click on this and I choose to There's some way There's some way to, um, this takes a while, I think, to go into the actual files that make this mod up. Yeah, see, here's all the things. And you see there's a lot of things because of all the pages. If I can find the one... Where the, um... White Lion's... Stuff is... What? Why did it just... Go out of there? trying to fix this. This one says White Lion. Okay. Oh, there's one in the sky. So, this should have everything. The White Lion Resources deck has 19 cards in it. Look. This one only has... See, I have accidentally deleted some White Lion cards. It's not... It's not good. Because... I've only got... 17 here, and there's 19 in the... In the real one. So what we're gonna do... Is delete this one. Just replace it with this one. And then this can go back away into the nether. But then, we're going to pull out, what is it, the, the cat eye and the cat bones, and the shimmering mane, eye of cat, cat bones, shimmering mane, okay, these can immediately go here, this can get copied. Pasted. This can be put back here. This can get brought down here. Problem solved. Shimmers in the lantern light. Isn't that nice? Alright, so the lion is already almost dead. It only has five AI cards left. Laughing Skull's turn is over. We've got a pretty slim hit location deck now. She has definitely earned her fist and tooth proficiency. Wouldn't mind him getting club proficiency. Well, I want him to get the killing blow for sure. But I'd like them to get proficiencies too. She can hit it just once with the Zanbato, which is nice. 
He, if he attacks, is gonna have to attack fucking nine times. Which means, you know, he's gonna either draw the trap card or obliterate it. So basically, he shouldn't attack at all, really. She could attack, though. With the Zanvato. And only swing once. But... Bone Tree... I wanted to get the killing blow, but he's gonna have to attack ten fucking times with his, cl <laughs> his club. Which means he's certainly gonna pull a trap card. We need to reset his... We need to reset this deck. So... Maybe I'll have Blood Skull attack with her dagger first. That'll be 11 attacks, which would be guaranteed trap card. She'll just trigger it, you know? Nine times with the pickaxe sickle. True. <laughs> She'll just attack with her dagger, right? That's 11 attacks. I don't need to roll anything because it doesn't matter because... It's guaranteed trap card. Like, we know the trap card's in here. I don't need to physically draw it out. Dagger's doomed, perform basic action. So then we can take the whole deck, reshuffle it. The monster will turn. It's never going to get to draw an AI card. The monster will turn and attack her. It'll just automatically stand up. It's gonna attack her. She's got an evasion of eight, meaning the monster needs to attack. It needs to roll tens to hit. It did get a hit. Holy shit. But she's got fencing. Get fenced on, motherfucker. And fencing saves her again. L O L O L O L O L O L O L. Okay, so. So that attack is wasted, but now she can go ahead and use her free surge from Sweet Battle to attack once with the Zambato. And she will do so. She can't miss, so. And I don't think doing. Perfect hit does anything for her either, so there's no need to roll any attacks. She hits once. So let's draw one hit location card. It's the beast knee. So she can't not she can't not um, wound, but she could roll a one and not crit. Okay, she does crit. She gets Grand Weapon Proficiency. This actually inflicts two wounds because the weapon is devastating. Oh, the weapon's deadly too. So never mind, she couldn't have not crit. She auto crits with this. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, so that's two wounds. And it gains a minus one movement token, which I'm not even going to bother with, because it's going to be dead before it gets a chance to move anyway. It only has three AI cards left. Now, he's got 19 cards in his hit location deck, which means Bone Tree could make his 10 fucking hammer attacks and have an okay chance to not get the trap card. So let's do it. Alright, he can't miss. Oh, I do need to see if he gets a perfect hit, though. But with 10 dice, I mean, come on. He 
He literally did not get a perfect hit. What a dick. Okay, it's not gonna matter. Because all those are hits. Every one of them. So we gotta pull 10 cards off of here and hope for the best. Damn it! There's the trap. Okay. Monster. Had to move up, of course. Monster turns around. Rawr, it's mad, it's gonna attack. Gotta roll tens to hit him though, so good luck with that. It fails to hit him. He will sweet battle surge. Wait, he doesn't have sweet battle. He's the only one that doesn't have it, right? Even she has it. I think I spent a survival on her. A surge earlier, and she didn't need to because she has sweet battle. I think she still has a survival. And I think I would have spent that survival to get plus one strength earlier. So we're going to just go ahead and do that. Um, he needs to spend survival to surge, but he can't because he's berserk, right? He is berserk, so he, he can't spend survival. Oh, well shit. All right, in that case, he's done. And the only person left to go is Bone Grinder. But Bone Grinder can't attack. If he attacks, he's going to fucking kill this thing. So the only thing Bone Grinder can do is fuck around a whole bunch, I guess. Only got three AI cards left, yeah. He'll just chill. He'll literally just chill and do nothing. High speed is kind of a curse, honestly. Like, a speed of two? Well, he doesn't need to draw out the trap, though, because the deck is already refreshed. The deck is as shuffled as it can be. So... You know what I'm saying? Like, drawing out the trap wouldn't matter, because if he did get the trap, it would just reshuffle, and it would be in the same state that it's in right now. All right. It's fine. The lion gets a turn. I'm disappointed that the lion actually gets a turn, but that's okay. It's gonna grasp. Doesn't it have the hand injury where it can't grab? No, that's a different one, I guess. Uh, oh, roll a d10. Okay, nothing happens. Closest knockdown survivor in range. Don't make me laugh. Closest survivor in range. That's Uri, buddy. We'll have him attack Bone Tree. Speed of 2, accuracy of 10. He doesn't hit. But... At the end of his turn, he gets to do Cunning. Targets an adjacent survivor at random. Okay. Uh, 
That's Bone Tree again. And move directly away from all threats, target suffers grab. Funny thing is, if I wasn't Berserk, I could actually use... Oh no, I guess I couldn't really use Tumble here. So, all of a sudden that minus one extra movement token I didn't put on him earlier. Or like a couple of them. Is suddenly relevant. There was at least one more minus one movement token than I was supposed to put on him and didn't. I think there was two, actually. Putting him on there. This movement's actually at a minus three. It's a four. Yeah, this is when he rolls the other d10, is when he starts his movement. Which he's now gonna do. Alright, but he gets his movement, so he's gonna move four. It says away from all threats, so... It's pretty much gonna be straight this direction, I suppose. He gets grabbed and pulled over here, placed in front of him, and knocked down. And he takes some damage from that. One damage per monster level, which is actually four damage. That's pretty significant. Oh, it's not from that. It's from this, but it's still four damage. And Bone Tree can't dodge this or anything, so... This is actually legitimately dangerous. It's to the waist. Well, that's going to be a severe injury. Four. Intestinal prolapse? That's not cool. Your gut is gravely injured. You can no longer equip any gear on your waist as it is too painful to wear. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding token. Does he even wear gear on his waist? Do any of us wear gear on our waist? I don't think so. Is there even any gear in the game we can wear on our waist? I mean, I'm not super concerned about that one. We'll take it. We'll take that intestinal prolapse. Well... Maybe not. Maybe we'll just lose one sur- You never know. Will you lose one survival and take the bleeding tokens instead? Does he have anything affecting severe injury rolls? I don't think so. Somebody does, though. This affects severe injury rolls. I thought there was something else that somebody had. Oh yeah, death mask. Ooh, those stack. Wait, if you have no affinities. Okay, he has no affinities. Minus four. He gets a minus five to severe injury rolls, so Blone, Bone Grinder will get fucked if he ever gets taken out of that insanity and he actually ever takes a real affinity, a real um, severe injury. He's going to have a minus five to the roll and that's brutal. 
That is straight brutal. But we're okay. We're okay. Bone Tree's got some bleeding tokens. He's he's feeling fine. He's got some bleeding kidneys. All right, now he can't just auto stand up at the start of this turn, unlike Laughing Skull. Not yet, anyway. So he's knocked down. Somebody else is actually going to have to encourage him. Laughing, a bone grinder can't do it because he has a broken jaw. Laughing Skull could do it, but she's only got one thing left. Doesn't somebody have something that you can use? Something when you encourage somebody? Man, we've used up a lot of survival on this one. Bone Tree can't encourage himself. No, I guess it's gonna have to be Blood Skull. She'll spend a survival to encourage him. And I guess that's it. I mean, she can't attack again. I guess she could hit again with her Zanbato, but there's not really a reason to. As long as he doesn't draw the trap card, he's absolutely going to obliterate this thing. But I guess she'll just encourage and chill. So now it'll be his turn. He doesn't need to move to the blind spot or anything. He's going to auto hit. Regardless. An auto wound, regardless. So... I want him to get his club proficiency, so he's actually going to use his club. So it's time to roll... The big 10 attacks. I don't need to roll the big 10 attacks. And I guess I will, just to see if I get a perfect hit. There's three of them. Perfect hit, and all hits other than that. So, the monster gets a minus one speed token now because it's dazed. Which is nice. That's what I like about the skull cap hammer. Also triggers his mighty strike, but that's irrelevant at this point. Big blue cube. Bloob. So he hit 10 times. Which sounds like good news until you consider that gives, still gives him a 50-50 chance to get a trap card here. There's the fucking trap again. Alright, put everything away. Here we go. <laughs> the monster's gonna attack him again. It's only got a speed of one. It gets two dice, needs tens to hit. Fails to hit. Um, he can't spend survival to surge because he's fucking berserk. So, that's it. We just have to wait until next turn. So we will. Well, this isn't good, though, because he's going to take the damage from Grab. He can't dodge it or anything, and that's going to be another severe injury. If he moves away... Oh, we have so much movement speed. 
we could just move away and the lion wouldn't even be able to reach us. <laughs> we're like, hey, Mr. Lion, we're over here. What are you going to do? And then on our turn, we could easily move back up to the lion because our movement speed is fucking ludicrous. I forgot. Montree has 12 movement. He's like, later, nerd. Except she already took her turn and she didn't move away. She's kind of going to take pipe on this plan. I think the best thing I can do then, really, is move him closer. She used a survival skill so she didn't actually act. But that had to be someone's turn. Because you can only use a survival skill between actions on the survivor's turn. And I don't think if it was his turn... I think I'd already said that I was doing it on her turn, though, so we'll just- it's fine. We'll just tank this shit with Bone Grinder for one- for one round. And then we'll do that strategy the next round, if there is a next round. We move Bone Grinder closer. It'll be cool. Let's see what the line pulls next. With his one AI card. Wait, Grasp again? Seriously? Okay, closest survivor in range. Will definitely be him. Spins around. Attacks him. With a speed of zero. So he doesn't even get to do this attack. <laughs> so he's done. And then he does his cunning thing. Moves directly away from a threat's target suffers grab. Alright, so directly away from all threats. One, two, three, four. Spin him around. Put him here, flip him over. It's fine, he'll take the four damage, but he's... You don't think the monster stats can go below one? Where'd you see that? This doesn't make any sense because most of the time the monster stats are always zero anyway. So they couldn't go below one. Giving them minus one tokens to things would be completely meaningless. Oh, but you know what? I was wrong. His speed is zero. It's not negative one. So actually, he'd still have one speed on this. But he wouldn't hit. Um, He's going to take four damage from the grab, but it doesn't matter because... Monsters have two unique attributes. Tokens. Toughness damage corresponding to these... Negative attribute tokens cannot reduce a monster's damage, toughness, movement, or speed below one. What? Okay, I see what you're saying.
The monsters section of the rule book. I feel like it means, though, because most of the time they start at a zero, and then they get tokens that add to it. Like, he's got his speed on his attacks. I think it's saying that you can't reduce it. His actual speed below a one. But, like, if he's got a bonus to speed, which he did, right? He's got a plus one speed here. You could use another minus one speed to, like, cancel that out, and he would still have his base speed on his cards. He just wouldn't have a bonus to it. So, like, I couldn't make it so that he can't attack at all. Because that would be a speed lower than one. But I could make it so that he doesn't get as many attacks. That's what I think it means. Same with movement. Like, I couldn't make it so his movement, he couldn't move at all. What were we doing? Oh, I know what we were doing. We were adding four points of grab damage to Bone Grinder, who takes it to his insanity. Then the monster's turn is over. All right. So. Fucking Bone Tree is gonna try to get in here and finish this shit. Please finish this shit, Bone Tree. No perfect hit this time. He actually removes that. And all hits, so here we go. Wish me luck. Okay. There it is again. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, he could use the fucking pickaxe instead, but 
he wouldn't get his proficiency and we'd still be rolling nine instead of instead of ten which wouldn't help us that much Can't even move away this time. I know, right? All right. Well, the monster turns around, and it attacks him with three dice. Tends to hit. No hits. Let's just... I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, is there even a fighting art that I want for him all that badly? Not really. Let's just fucking kill this thing. You know, I wouldn't mind getting Monster Claw style for her. What does she have now? I think I'd give up... I'd give up Mighty Strike, probably, because her strength is already so fucking high. I wouldn't mind her getting the Killing Blow, really. Get in there and deliver her fucking seven attacks. Or six. She doesn't even hit, need to hit with Fist and Tooth right now because she already did. So really, she could just throw some darts and we could call it a day. Alright, Laughing Skull's gonna, like, kind of move... She's just gonna like move over here and throw six darts. Okay, those are actually she needs sevens, no, fours to hit. That's actually only three hits. Pretty terrible Laughing Skull. Only three hits. That means she's probably not going to draw the trap, though. Now, her chance to crit on these is two or better, so... They're all crits. That takes away all the rest of the AI cards from the monster. He's one hit from death. I gain a random resource. He's, his movement is reduced to... And he's knocked down, well, or killed, we'll see. Two random light, or a lion claw, a random white lion resource. And he's knocked down. And his movement is down to like... Minus five. Another great cap bone. He's got quite the little fucking collection going over here.
How is she removing a monster's bones by throwing darts at it? I don't... Alright, let's just let her finish this fucker off. She's gonna surge. She has sweet battle now, so she can surge for free. And attack him again. With an additional... With additional six darts. He's got 17 cards in his deck, so good chance of not getting the trap. Not sure why I'm rolling. They're all hits. No, they're not. I keep forgetting her accuracy is shitty compared to everyone else. Five of them are hits. I only get to wound one of these locations, because that'll be the killing blow. Non-death survivors gain plus three insanity. Gain a resource. Hmm. I'll take the resource. Look at all this stuff that she fucking collected. And it's dead. I don't know where the fuck that die went. Get that get out of here, die. How many white, how many fucking bones have we gotten? Two. Be nice to get one more. That way everybody on the team could have a Zambato. Alright, um. Instead. Yay, us. She gets the killing blow. We get a hunt XP and a weapon proficiency. Bone grinder is getting real close. He did not hit with a club. She did hit with Fist and Tooth, though. And... We get... 1 and 8, or 4 and 8, and an Elder Cat Teeth, that's right. get eight of these yes another great cat bone and a white fur and another white fur and another lion claw and another great cat bone and some testes and some whiskers we could make a harp do we already have a harp I know I have one on my other game I don't see one. We don't have a harp. Oh, well, we'll make one now that we have golden whiskers. And then we'll take these eight items and we will copy them. And we will paste them. And we will take them back. And we will add them back to this stack. That didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Oh, that did work out the way I wanted it to. Lovely.
And we get an iron because for some reason we just do. We got a lot of iron this time. Too bad we pretty much have very little use for it. Um, and Survivor gains a fighting art of their choice. Which would be Laughing Skull. So I think since she's doing Fist and Tooth, we're going to take Monster Claw style. Which will give her one accuracy, one strength, and Savage with Fist and Tooth attacks. Accuracy will be nice because her accuracy is not that good. And Savage means she does an extra wound when she crits. She has to give something up, though. I'm going to give up Mighty Strike. What? Why is this... She's got enough strength now that Mighty Strike is getting kind of irrelevant. Now she's a badass with her hands. She already was a badass, but now she's badder asser. And then once you master Fist and Tooth, it's pretty cool. You get plus two permanent accuracy and plus two permanent strength that you get even if you're not attacking with Fist and Tooth, which is pretty rad. All right, we collected a lot of stuff. Hey, where'd all those ones I copied go? Oh, they're up there. We seriously got all this shit? We got this much stuff? And all this? No! No! Ah, oh, what did I just do? Let's try rewinding time. I'm real... I don't have a lot of faith in this rewind time thing because like a lot of weird shit can happen and can pretty much break and ruin your game, which I might have done. So not 100% sure why I pushed that button. Dude, I fucked up, didn't I? Did I delete some stuff? Somebody has some items. I think there were more items and I think they're gone now. And I don't... I mean, the only way I can find out is by checking the video of this. <laughs>
But we like, we definitely had more iron than this. So whatever was like here has been lost. I don't know if Bone Grinder had anything in front of him either. Yeah, rewind time, not really a great button to push. Because it doesn't necessarily, you know, rewind time. There is a save game. It auto saves every so often. How often? When was the last time it auto saved? 8 17 11 p.m. It's 8 21 p.m. Let's load this and see what happens. I could be making things even worse. I could be digging myself into an even worse hole here. I don't know what's going to happen when I load this save. Yeah, we got problems here. We got red error messages across my screen. I think we fixed it though. She's got her monster claw style, right? She's got all of her items in front of her. He's got all of his items in front of him. He's got all of her items in front of her. Here's our basic resources. And here's all of our... other ones. Yeah, here's all our stuff. I like to see it all laid out. I don't think we're hunting any more fucking lions. I'm sick of lions, man. I ain't lying about that. So I think this was our total haul. Alright, this is everything we got. It's pretty good. It's a lot of things from one hunt. A lot of things. Oh, whoa, what's happening right now? Ah, 28! 28 resources! All condensed down into one fucking pile.
I think I just discovered an interesting feature of the program, though. Watch this. Yeah, it works. No, it didn't work. No, it's not doing what I thought it was going to do. I thought if I picked all those up... Oh, see, it worked that time. If I picked a bunch of things up and shook them around with my mouse, that it, like, automatically shuffles them together. But it didn't look like it, like, always worked. It looked like it could work. Every one of these is coming out crooked. Alright, so here's all the things we have now. A lot of things. A lot of things. Wow, that's more resources than I've ever had at one time in this game. That is a crazy amount of resources. You get back to town and lose all your resources, lol. Now, um... Uh, I want these fucking columns out of here. I want this pillar out of here. Alright. Tell me about the lions. Okay, well, the trample... I made a copy of this card, right? Because this is from the Screaming Antelope deck. And a copy of... Maybe I didn't. But I still have their deck sitting right here, so I guess it's not a copy. Now I can put those away. We're not fighting this creature again. Unless at some point I decide there's a fighting art that I really need to have. Alright, so the lion stuff... Spiral formation can go back on the tactic stack. Cunning goes back in his special deck. His wound stack, we're gonna pull out ground fighting. Bloodthirsty. Enraged. Vanish. Legendary cat card I've never seen yet. Smart cat. Terrifying roar. These ten go back on its basic pile. These six go advanced. This one goes legendary. Then we can take all of this stuff and we can take its hunt events. Put those back over here. Bring this over here. And put these over here to be utilized as I see fit on the next hunt. Um, okay, and then I can put all this shit away. I think I'm done with white lions for a while. Fire. 
Wait. Why is all this in here? It's all pulled out here. Well, I guess it's all in there. The resources deck. With 19 cards. The hunt events. With 8 cards. The special AI deck with 2 cards. The actual white lion thing. A locations deck with 23 cards. Well, if that's the case, if it's all already in there, I can just delete all this. Cool. Now we can heal and reset as we go to head back to town. And anything special going to happen this year? Oh, we get our conviction. Man, that's a lot of stuff. So much stuff. Like an overwhelming amount. So it's time to do the settlement phase. We'll get to do our principal conviction. The Hooded Knight will come again. We we'll do Gorm Climate again. Gorm fucking Climate WTF. And then we can innovate and get a new innovation. Hopefully, records. Overwhelming darkness of resources, right? And then we can, you know what, I'm not going to use these. Little baggies to put these things in, ever. I'm deleting them. Get out of here, little baggies. Golden Whiskers, though, I can make a harp. Harp's nice because I can get rid of a mood that's in play, and sometimes those moods are really bad news. Alright, so ordinarily I do an entire lantern year in one video. With including the settlement phase and then I stop but pretty tired I don't think I have it in me to do this settlement phase right now so I think I'm gonna end this episode now I'm gonna save here it's gonna say skull campaign skull campaign Start of settlement 
phase year twelve. Yeah. In the next episode, I'll either just do this settlement phase and then end the episode and start the next episode of the next year, or I might do this settlement phase and the entire next Lantern year all in one video. I'm not sure. Well, it depends on how long the settlement phase itself takes me, because sometimes the settlement phase can take me a long time. But this hunt phase and battle phase has ended up taking forever, as it is. Even without the settlement phase, so. And uh, I, was, I was pretty tired when I started, and I'm feeling pretty tired, because this game is... It's not a casual game, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it kind of takes a lot of brain energy to play. So... Movement can return to zero. Not a cat soul game, says Knox. Yeah. Now that I adjusted that, I need to... I'm just appalled at how much stuff we have. Amazed. Thirty-six. You know what? Honestly, fuck this game. flip the table because of the nature of the custom stuff on here it didn't really show the table flipping animation much but that's what I did I flipped the table flipping it again all right I've already saved so like that's not gonna affect anything Let's see what kind of uh, intelligent discourse is taking place in the tabletop simulator chat. Looking for more players to give me cummies. Do I even want to know what a cummy or tendy is? Big Nut DLC in the Cornhole Eurogame expansion. Wow. I've really been missing out by not having this chat on in the actual game. I've really been missing out. All right gonna do it for this episode thank you for watching this has been josiah plays kingdom death monster on tabletop simulator